Hello and welcome to Quick Charge. It's Monday, July 10th, and I'm Joe, filling in for Mikey, who is out sick today. So let's jump into it. According to the governor of Nuevo León, Samuel Alejandro Garcia Sepulveda, Tesla Gigafactory Mexico is about to receive all of its final permits and move into the construction phase. There will be a lot of excitement watching the progress of the site, as Tesla has talked about building the factory in record time. Tesla has said they hope to beat Gigafactory Shanghai's timeline of nine months between groundbreaking and production. Uh, groundbreaking hasn't happened in the four months since the initial announcement as the company has been waiting for permits. But now that the government has said the green light will come at any moment, we may see a flurry of activity at the site. Tesla's first Optimus robot displays have arrived in stores in North America. You can check out the Tesla bot in New York City right now. Earlier this week, we revealed that Tesla was planning to use the Optimus robot displays in stores in North America after successfully using the prop to attract retail presence in China. And sure enough, a non-working display shell of the robot has appeared in the Tesla store in Manhattan, New York. Looking at the progress of the actual working robots, Tesla has recently released images of a bunch of working prototypes in its labs, but it's unclear when the company will offer the product commercially. The EPA is finalizing its 2027-2023 vehicle standard emissions limit rules and taking comments from the automakers. Currently, the proposed standards would slash emissions from new vehicles by 56%, and a result in about 60% of new vehicles being electric by 2030 and 67 by about 2032. Tesla told the Environmental Protection Agency that the United States could go all electric by 2030, but it would settle for 69% of new car sales. Tesla believes it isn't asking much because it sees a sound legal basis for an even more stringent set of standards than the EPA's current proposal. That could result in the end of internal combustion engine vehicles by about 2030. Now, Tesla doesn't really have much to lose since they're already at 100% EV sales, and so that means they're immune from the threatened fines towards automakers. This week's episode is sponsored by Pedego Electric Bikes, America's number one electric bike retailer. Pedego believes in making e-bikes easy to use and incredibly fun to ride. That's why they offer an extensive selection of over 20 e-bike models, each with endless customization options. No matter your style or preference, Pedego has the perfect bike for you. That includes the Avenue, the company's newest model designed with a classic European look paired with modern features. It has a 500 watt motor, 48 volt battery, and a range of about 56 miles on a single charge, making it perfect for commuting or leisurely rides around the town. The Avenue comes in both a 28 inch classic and step through frame and in a 26 inch step through frame, making it accessible for any rider. With over 220 plus stores across the country, staffed with knowledgeable local experts and dedicated service technicians, Pedego ensures that you receive personalized attention and support every step of the way. Pedego also offers a five year warranty on all e-bikes, which is among the longest on the market. In July, Pedego is running an exclusive promotion for electric listeners. You can save up to $500 on their bikes, including their newest bike, the Avenue. You can visit pedego.com forward slash electric to get the access now or hit the link in the show notes below. Thanks again to Pedego for sponsoring. Lexus is offering steep discounts on its electric RZ. Lexus unveiled its first all-electric model last April, the 2023 Lexus RZ 450e, based on parent company's ETNGA platform. You know, it's the same one for Toyota's BZ4X and Subaru Solterra. The first Toyota entry in the electric age is mostly competent. <laughs> However, the limited quick charge sessions, lack of glove box, and early recall held it back. Now, according to bulletins sent to dealers and Lexus's website, the automaker is offering up to $10,000 in lease cash up until the end of this month. Now, part of this is just regular old price incentives, as Lexus has already offered $75,000 lease incentives that could take advantage of the tax credit loophole for lease vehicles. Once considered the leader in China's auto industry, Volkswagen has watched its share of the pie shrink 
over the past year or so as EV makers like BYD, NIO, Tesla, you know, all of them are stealing the show. So in an attempt to draw in buyers, Volkswagen is slashing the price of its small ID3 electric car. For a limited time, Volkswagen will offer the ID3 at what they're calling a historically low price, as low as 125,900 yuan, which is roughly about $17,500 in the US. What's interesting is that over a dozen automakers in China recently pledged to avoid price wars and VW joined in using their joint venture with state-owned FAW. At Electric, we're starting to wonder how useful that pledge will be. And wouldn't you know it, General Motors is slashing the prices of its Cadillac Lyric by almost 14% amid heightening competition in China's EV market. According to the company's website and social media, the Cadillac Lyric now starts at 379,700 yuan, which is about, let me see, that's about $52,443 in the U.S. This is down from the previous price of about $61,000 U.S. dollars. What's interesting here is the Cadillac Lyric is in a very different segment from the VW ID3. Both VW and GM have acknowledged that Chinese EV market is highly competitive. It may not amount to much, but the EV price war pledge in the Chinese market was not entered into by General Motors. GM's Chinese partner, SAIC, did indeed join. However, the GM and SAIC joint venture did not. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Robert Algier, 2019, says, Without driving one, I think Canoe is my favorite EV. Any news from them? With all these orders, they ought to be moving briskly. All right, thank you. Well, Robert, it's not exactly sunny skies for Canoe. Although they got a fair amount of units out in their domestic market of South Korea, it never really caught on in key markets. It still lives on to a degree since it was designed to be wildly modular, as it was, in fact, an open source platform. The Canoe was a decent utility machine with a striking pill-shaped design, but with the hype of the next generation and the competition heating up, this portable gaming platform didn't make it anywhere near the market it needed to save the company. Oh well. All right, guys, this has been Joey, covering for Mikey, signing off. Hope to see you guys again in the future and have a wonderful rest of the summer.